In this section, we're going to talk about doing a, a rigid insulation infill and then putting the roof right on top of that. Now, this is for the owner that, that really wants the extra protection of ice and water shield on his job uh, on top of his roof. So you get extra, extra protection and is, and is concerned about having continuous insulation coverage. Okay, so continuous insulation coverage, extra ice and water shield, and then give you the least chance of having a leak during the construction, right? During the recover, because you can do this method and be watertight pretty much the whole time, which is, you know, a high concern for a lot of people. The only thing here is that you're only, you're only adding weight, albeit, you know, the amount of weight that you're going to add in this system is really depends on how much insulation. So you can use an ISO, you can go over the top pretty fast. And so you just need to calculate your weights uh, to make sure that, <clears throat> that you're not going over. Also, this system you can use in really high wind uplift zones because basically you're attaching the standing seam panel directly through to the purlins. And so if you're using continuous clips, uh, I mean, if you're using a symmetrical panel with continuous clips, you can uh, uh, bring the bring the bring the narrow you know narrow up the panel spacing and uh, use continuous clips at five foot on center. We're up to like 167.5 pounds allowable at five foot on center with this system. So what you could use with either a roof hugger at five foot on center or this method with you know at five foot on center. So the first thing that you're going to do with this idea or this method is you're going to put, you're going to use some flute fill. So it can be ISO flute fill or it can be EPS flute fill. Uh, I like this stuff because it's form fit, right? It's form cut. And you can get this stuff cut where it's a little bit tighter. This stuff has got a little bit of a slop in it. And then you put ISO on top of it, or you could just use a, an HD cover board. Uh, I like, I like using ISO myself. Um, Basically, you're going to put four, four by eight boards, and then you can fasten all this system down just lightly to the to the existing panel to hold it in place. You can put your ice and water shield on this, and then you put your roof on. You know, so you got your your roof panel goes on, and then if you want to use if you need to use continuous clips, then continuous clips gets installed first. So then you would take the two continuous clips and these things, like I can said, can be running any length up to about 30 feet. So you take the continuous clips, you put them back to back, you clamp them together, and then you're gonna use a long fastener. These are probably not quite long enough, but this is a long uh, Tech 3 fastener that's designed to attach into a purlin. So you're gonna have to mark where your purlins are. And these continuous clips are t uh, attached with two fasteners per side. So it's gonna be four fasteners per connection into the purlins. And so you don't need a bearing plate if you're using the continuous clips. If you're using individual clips, then you're gonna to wanna to use a bearing plate. So the individual clips are gonna install on the side of the panel. You're gonna set a bearing plate down over the purlin, and then you're going to set your clip into the, into the panel like that and then you're gonna fasten through your bearing plate into the purlin below, and then uh, and, and, and you just gotta mark your purlins where they are. So this can give you a really good installation of a watertight roof. You're not gonna get any structural enhancement. You're only adding weight, so you wanna make sure that you get straight with the engineering uh, to make sure that the roof is good with, with having this weight added onto it. But this is a great system for high wind uplift, if they want continuous insulation uh, and they want to be watertight the whole time. So this is a good system for those, for those kind of uh, situations, right? And then you can use whatever width panel that you want to on top. But just, you know, you may have a little struggle getting through some of these ribs, but most of the time you're not. Uh, I've, I've seen very little problem with that. So great system for that type of installation. I hope this has been informative for you. Uh, this is going to be the end of this, this video regarding uh, how to recover an R panel. I uh, hope this has been helpful. And the next uh, video is going to be how to recover a, a, a low floating standing seam on open purlins. So I, I hope you watch it. Have a great day.